Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today we're going to talk about the influence of Arabic on Spanish and Portuguese. You know, one of the fascinating things about languages is that they don't exist inside a vacuum. They grow and develop and they're shaped by the events that affect their speakers. As different communities of people come into contact with each other, their languages influence each other. One such case is the effect or the influence of Arabic on Spanish and Portuguese. Spanish and Portuguese both developed on the Iberian Peninsula and began as Romance dialects that developed from Vulgar Latin, in other words, regional spoken dialects of Latin. Distinct Romance languages had begun to arise by approximately the 10th century, by which point an early form of Castilian, today often referred to as just Spanish, was being used, as well as Old Portuguese, also known as Galician Portuguese. But during that time period when these dialects were developing into distinct languages, much of the Iberian Peninsula was under Muslim control, which began with the Umayyad conquest in the year 711. A series of Muslim kingdoms ruled, within changing borders, until the year 1492. These Muslims of Berber and Arab ancestry, who ruled and settled on the peninsula, were referred to collectively as Moors. The southern part of what is now Portugal was under Muslim rule for around 500 years, while the northern part returned to Christian rule much sooner. Portugal was fully reconquered from the Moors by the year 1249. In Spain as well, the south remained under Muslim rule for much longer than the north. Spain was fully reconquered from the Moors in 1492 with the reconquest of Granada, the last remnant of Muslim rule. During the Reconquista, or Reconquest, the Castilian language spread towards the south and came into contact with southern Romance dialects that had been more influenced by the Arabic language of the Muslim rulers. These dialects are collectively referred to as Mozarabic dialects. Some of this influence was absorbed into Castilian. After hundreds of years under Arabic-speaking Muslim rulers, why aren't Spain and Portugal Arabic-speaking countries today? It's largely because they didn't stay conquered. They kept pushing back against the Muslim armies and taking back areas that had been conquered. And in the end, the whole peninsula came back under Christian rule. The only area where Arabic became the main language of all social classes was in the small kingdom of Granada. But there, like everywhere else on the peninsula, Muslims were violently forced to convert and assimilate. And eventually, all former Muslims, or people who practiced Islam in secret, were expelled. So Arabic didn't have that much of a chance to gain a permanent foothold. But it did have a significant impact on Spanish and Portuguese, in particular in vocabulary, especially nouns. Spanish and Portuguese were both influenced in similar ways, and in many cases they borrowed the same vocabulary from Arabic. But because parts of Spain were under Muslim control much longer than Portugal, there is more Arabic influence on Spanish. Most sources say there are around 4,000 Spanish words of Arabic origin and around a thousand Portuguese words of Arabic origin, though a lot of these have fallen out of use. It's also important to note that many of the Arabic-based words also have native Spanish and Portuguese equivalents, which might be used in different contexts or with different shades of meaning. Arabic influenced the vocabulary of various facets of life. Words related to residence and architecture. In Spanish, barrio, meaning neighborhood. In Portuguese, bairro. From the Arabic word, barri. In the Andalusian dialect of Arabic, this word meant the outskirts of the city, or the less civilized parts of the city. The original classical Arabic word means wild or savage. In Spanish, fonda. In, as in hotel. There's no equivalent word that's used in Portuguese. This comes from the Arabic word funduk, meaning inn or hotel. And there are parts of a building or home. In Spanish, zaguan, meaning hallway. This word has fallen out of use or is considered old-fashioned in many Spanish-speaking countries, but it's still used in some countries, and sometimes by older people or in rural areas. There's a cognate word in Portuguese. Saguão. My understanding is that this word is not really used in Portugal anymore, but is still used in Brazil, though that seems to depend on the age and region of the speaker. These words come from the Arabic word Ustuana, meaning pillar. And this influence continues on to objects within the home. Taça, meaning cup. In Portuguese, taça. From the Arabic word, taça. Many Spanish and Portuguese words of Arabic origin begin with al or a. This usually derives from the Arabic definite article al. Algodón, meaning cotton. And in Portuguese, algodón. This comes from the Arabic word, alcotón. 
Note that the definite article can be used to make a noun definite or to refer to a noun in a general sense. This is probably why the definite article sometimes became an inseparable part of the Spanish or Portuguese word, like in these two words here. This word is, of course, related to agriculture. The Moors had a significant impact on agriculture and cuisine on the Iberian Peninsula. This influence is reflected in vocabulary related to food. Aceite. Meaning oil. There's also a Portuguese equivalent. Azeite. Which means olive oil, specifically. From the Arabic word. Azeite. Meaning oil. This Arabic word comes from the same root as the word for olive. The obvious connection here being olive oil. Aceituna. Aceituna. From Aceituna. Azafran. Meaning saffron, a kind of spice. And in Portuguese. Azafran. This comes from Arabic. Azafran. Which means saffron. Words like these that begin with a but not with al are often a result of assimilation of the l sound, the l sound, or lam in Arabic. Arabic has two categories of consonants, sun letters and moon letters. When the sun letters are at the beginning of a word, they cause the l sound to assimilate. One of the sun letters is zayn, the first consonant in the Arabic root word of the past three examples. Another food word. Albaricoque. Meaning apricot. This word does have an old Portuguese equivalent, but it seems that it's entirely out of use now. This comes from the Arabic word albarcoq, meaning plum, and a Portuguese word alfas, meaning lettuce. This comes from the Arabic word alhas, meaning lettuce, and there's no Spanish equivalent for this Portuguese word. Zanahoria, snora, meaning carrot. These words come from the Arabic word isfanaria. This isn't a very common word for carrot anymore, but it is still used in some regional dialects. Albondiga. Almondga. Meatball. These words come from the Arabic word albunduka, which means hazelnut, a word which actually entered Arabic from ancient Greek. Ponticon carion. Arroz. Arroz. Meaning rice. This word came from the Arabic word arroz, which ultimately entered Arabic from ancient Greek. Oriza. Just as some of these Arabic words ultimately came from ancient Greek, some of them ultimately came from Persian or Sanskrit. Azúcar. Azúcar. Meaning sugar. From the Arabic word. Azúcar. The Arabic word came from the Persian word. Shakar. And the Persian word came from the Sanskrit word. Sharkara. Meaning ground or candied sugar. Originally, grit or gravel. Naranja. Laranja. Orange. These come from the Arabic word. Naranj which came from the Persian word narang, which came from the Sanskrit word naranga, meaning orange tree. This is not the usual modern word for sweet oranges, but an old word that referred to bitter oranges, before sweet oranges existed in the Mediterranean region. The modern word for sweet oranges is burtukal, which actually comes from the name of the country Portugal. By the way, there are also words that are of full Arabic origin, but that entered Spanish and Portuguese indirectly, and not as a result of Muslim control on the Iberian Peninsula. For example, Café. Café. Meaning coffee. In Arabic, Kahwa. This word was actually borrowed from the Italian word, Café, which came from Ottoman Turkish, Kahve, which came from Arabic. Another area in which Arabic influenced the vocabulary of Spanish and Portuguese is mathematics, since Islamic civilization contributed much to the advancement of mathematics during the Middle Ages. Perhaps the most famous example is algebra. Algebra. These come from the Arabic word aljabr, meaning reunion or resettling of broken parts, a word used in the title of the scholar Al-Khwarizmi's influential work Ilm al-Jabr wal which translates as the science of restoration and equating like with like. The name of that scholar, Al-Khwarizmi, also gave rise to the word Algoritmo, algoritmo. or algorithm in English. Cifra, digit or numeral, and there's also a cognate word in Portuguese. These come from the Arabic word Cifr, meaning empty or zero. This influence extends into astronomy and the sciences, Azore. meaning mercury. But this is an older word for mercury, and it seems a lot of people these days have never heard it. This comes from the Arabic word Azawuk. This Arabic word, too, is an older word for mercury, and not the common one that's used today. Alchemia. Alchemia. Alchemy, the pursuit of trying to transform base metals into gold. These come from the Arabic word Alchemia. Ultimately from ancient Greek Chemea. Elixir. Elixir. 
elixir, a liquid medicine. This comes from the Arabic word al ikthir which Arabic actually got from ancient Greek xerion. Most of these words relating to mathematics and science actually entered Spanish and Portuguese through medieval Latin, rather than directly from Andalusian Arabic. Since they're academic words, they entered the academic language first, rather than the everyday spoken language. Another element of Arabic that influenced Spanish, but not so much Portuguese, is demonyms, the words used to refer to someone's nationality or place of origin. Demonyms in Spanish typically end in an O, like Italiano or Es, Japonés. But for demonyms relating to the Arab world, the Arabic demonym suffix E is often retained. For example, Marroquí, Iraqí, Omaní, Bahraini, Kuwaiti. But that's not the case for all of them. Palestino, Sirio, Libanés. In Portuguese, they generally use the typical Portuguese suffix. Marroquín, Iraquien. Toponyms, place names. These are arguably not really part of the Spanish or Portuguese languages, they're just place names. But they show us just how much of a linguistic footprint was left by the Moors. Perhaps the most famous is... Alhambra. The fortress in Granada, Spain, which was built by the Moors. Its name comes from the Arabic word... Alhamra. Meaning the red one, referring to the color of the stone structure. Another place you've probably heard of... Gibraltar. Gibraltar. This name comes from Arabic Jabal Tariq, meaning Mountain of Tariq. Tariq refers to Tariq ibn Ziyad, the commander who led the initial invasion of the peninsula in the year 711. Algarve, a region in southern Portugal. This comes from Arabic Al Gharb, meaning the west. Why is it named after the word for west and not south? Well, I guess the Moors named it when they controlled a larger area, and this region was located in the western part of the area they controlled. These place names of Arabic origin are not limited to the Iberian Peninsula. Maybe you've heard of Guadalajara in Mexico. Its name comes from the Arabic term Wadi al-Hijara, which means Valley of Stones. In terms of syntax, there seems to be little or no influence of Arabic, at least none that's provable. There are some hunches. For example, in Spanish, VSO word order is used more often than it is in other Romance languages, and Arabic happens to be VSO but there's no proof that this is due to Arabic influence. It's clear that virtually all of Arabic's influence lies in the area of vocabulary, and over the centuries, a lot of that vocabulary has become obsolete, and as different languages like French and English have come into vogue, different types of loan words have come to influence both languages more. But still, words of Arabic origin are an important part of both Spanish and Portuguese and are used on a daily basis. The question of the day, for native speakers of Spanish and Portuguese, what words of Arabic origin do you most commonly use or hear? And for speakers of Arabic, if you're familiar with Spanish and Portuguese, do you notice a lot of Arabic words in them? How about in English or other Western languages? If you recognized the Arabic voice in this video, that's because it was Maha from the channel Learn Arabic with Maha. She has a great channel full of useful Arabic lessons, and actually her channel was one of my main inspirations for starting LangFocus a few years ago, so she is my senpai. So if you're learning Arabic, or if you'd like to learn Arabic, be sure to check out her channel. And also, be sure to check out the various LangFocus social media accounts. And once again, thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters, especially my top-tier Patreon supporters right here on the screen. Many, many special thanks to them. And to everyone, thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.